Hello everybody! Years ago I made a tutorial video explaining how does work manap tickets and MVM rewards for dummies. It was way before the coming of the Two Cities update, so yeah, long time ago. The loot screen was different, there weren't robot parts dropping, no Australians, only but kills, and above all, no freaking golden fry pan. Later on, when Australium came out, I added a video explaining about them, available killstreak type and such. But it never got any major attention and was just an addendum to the whole thing. So all in all, I think it's time for a man up tickets and rewards for dummies reloaded, with the latest and greatest things which keep people playing and sending money to Valve for that rewards, kinda. And if Valve in the coming weeks should drop a new update totally reworking the entire MVM man up system, well, yes, this video would be obsolete and screwed up again, but I'd be freaking happy nonetheless. We badly need new content, Gaben. Are you hearing? Iron Gauntlet and you lose anyone? Open all the emails the Iron Gauntlet's team members sent to you already. So, we'll split this video in sections. First being, what's the difference between manaps and bootcamp? The difference are just three. One, you are going to play on different servers. The manap servers are always directly managed by Valve because they don't like possible community mods that help people toward the goal. Second, you are going to spend tickets on this. Later, we'll see how many. Third, you are going to win some loots and rewards in the form of special item drops, ranging from extremely common weapons to one of the rarest and desired reward, that is, the golden frying pan, somewhat 120 existing in the whole world and dropped so far. If those are the difference, the similarities are all the rest. You can play with randoms or match with friends, and you can select the same missions. If you select Gear Grinder Cataclysm mission, for example, it is the same in both those scenarios. Same robots, exactly the same. The only problem you could have is that generally bootcamp is infested by new people, so you hardly can face the same difficulties of manap. But if you go and play with a group of five friends, the experience is almost the same. I'm saying almost because often the server you will end up is not valves and the quality of the server, lags, possible weird mods, could affect slightly the outcome. But if you end up in a valve with camp server, then yeah, it's definitely the same experience, but free. It is not paying any ticket, but getting nothing in exchange as well. In reality, there is a difference of missions between bootcamp and manap. Being in favor of bootcamp, though, manap lacks the very basic normal missions. They are pretty easy and just introduce people to how to play in MVM. You don't need much coordination in the groups, so it's safe to assume that anybody with a grain of salt would win those. That's why in manap mode, Valve has got rid of them. You'll start directly from intermediate and up while bootcamp as normal end up. The art the ceiling is exactly the same though. After this first question, let's focus on an app where most of the other questions follow. What does a ticket do? How long it will last? If you want to play in an app, you need to have bought a ticket. Having a tour of duty ticket doesn't necessarily mean you end up wasting it. You'll see in a moment. But you definitely need at least one ticket in your backpack, else you can't click the search button for connecting to anything. Then you should decide which tour to play. There are at least one for every difficulty, ranging from intermediate, then advanced, that offers some, and finally expert. Each tour is made of different missions, always more than three, up to six maximum for some tours. And each mission is a match against the robots in a given map, there can be different missions taking place in the same map. What it changes, always, between missions is the flow of robots, the waves, which type of robots you could expect, and so on. In my opinion, you should add in your auto exec config file of TF2, found in your TF CFG folder, this line. CLMVM wave status visible during wave 1. This allows you to have clear the mission composition at all times, not only with tabbing. This says what to expect in each mission. You slowly learn which every icon means. 
Heavy, Scout, Soldier, Medigan Medic, Quick Fix Medic, and so on. This is crucial for your decision toward which class to pick, and which upgrade to prefer. If you see a lot of soldiers, you better prefer Blast Resistance over Bullet. Red Icons represents Giants. The more you progress in advanced and expert missions, the more Giants you will find. Hard to take down, see them as a stream of bosses in arcade games. Second topic, what the ticket does. It allows you to play in these servers, and at the very end of each mission, that is when you actually win the mission and the victory screen appears, in that moment you have two immediate actions. The ticket in your backpack got consumed, and one or more items drop in your backpack in exchange. The loot screen is just a graphical show of what is happening to you and your other teammates. Mind you that whatever happens before the screen doesn't count. You might fail 100 waves before winning the final and it would change the outcome. You might judge the game in later waves, there is a tick specifically for that, and you will end up with the same rewards as if you were joined at wave 1. Just you are paying for less time spent. This can be something desirable or undesirable for you, depending if you see playing MDM as like a time wasted in the wait for the loot or something you actually enjoy spending by wrecking robots. I am on the latter. All this happens at victory screen, as I said. You can lose connection one second after and still having the new items in your backpack and not the ticket anymore. It's a link thing, as soon as you lose the ticket, items are coming, as if you traded with Valve and clicked accept in the moment you win. And yes, you heard it well, your ticket will last for just a one mission, no more. You could hope that it will bring you till the end of a tour, while it is not. It is just for a mission, and as I said, tours are made up of at least three missions. Which type of rewards can be found in Manap mode? Okay, now things get messed up. First, let's separate three types of possible drops you might have. They are fairly well divided in the loot screen as different columns. The first column represents items that you are getting at every ticket consumed, thus at every mission you win. You clearly see the ticket get ripped here below. Things that can drop here are generally just a single weapon, a normal damn unique weapon worth half a scrap metal. The only exception so far is when you play the Two Cities Tour, that was the newest of the bunch, still more than two years ago. It doesn't drop weapons, but Robo Parts was used is worthless unless you trade them away. But combined all together, they are the ingredients for fabricators we'll discuss in a moment. Then there is the second column, that you should always see empty, it is if someone in the team is genius enough to spend real money to buy a worthless quad surplus voucher. Despite his appearance resembles the Tour of Duty ticket, the surplus voucher is one of the most worthless items in the entire game. What it grants, in fact, is, upon winning a mission, it gets consumed and everybody in the team, the player and his teammates, get one item each. But this item can't be anything but a unique weapon, or, if I am not wrong, a hat. But as per every stock drops in TF2, this can be just a 4% chance of dropping, so not occurring very frequently. Even the stock weapons in the first column can be hats sometimes, but for the same percentage of 4%. And so, 96 times every 100, a voucher costing you a lot of money transforms into 6 weapons one for you and the rest for your friends, one reclaimed of metal. Got it? <laughs> and even an hat is no way costly as like as how much the voucher is in the Manco store. You better avoid paying for it and continue seeing this second column empty at all times. Then there is the third and last column of the loot screen, the most valuable. And also the mostly changing in value based on randomness. First, let's say when it is actually filled. It is only a tour ending. This means if you are playing in a tour like, for example, Steel Trap made of six different missions, you need to consume six tickets to win each of their missions and to have 
while you get the last sixth reward, this column filled because you conclude both a mission and the tool itself. You can play the six missions in the order you prefer, so it means it just depends which of them you have selected as your last of the tool. When this occurs, many different things may drop, depending on two factors, the tool you are playing and your luck. For sure, it is granted a bigger reward, bigger than the stupid unique weapons of normal missions. For the following tools, ranging from intermediate to expert, you can get a different flavor of a bot killer. Intermediate oil spill, 6 tickets required. Advanced steel trap, 6 tickets required. Advanced mecha engine, 3 tickets required. And expert gear grinder, 3 tickets required. Why do some tools require more tickets? In Valve's mind, each mission in there should be easier to win, so you might take the same amount of time in a random team to win 6 times in Steel Trap or 3 times in Mecha Engine, because they count also the lost waves in between, on average. And when I say different flavor, it's just because Oil Spills gives Rust Pot Killers, Steel Trap and Mecha Engine gives Silver, Mark 1 with Heavy Heads, or Mark 2 with NG Heads, respectively, and Expert gives Carbonado. One myth to debunk is that the glass of the weapons is somewhat linked to what you have played. It's totally untrue, and there is an equal amount of chance of getting, let's say, a rifle, than a rocket launcher. So the above is a given, this is the minimum granted. About to see this, the minimum granted reward is a normal kill kit for a random weapon and a specialized kill streak fabricator for another one. You can get less than these. Now, things start being more valuable, depending on luck, because if the above is the minimum, it happens around 10% of the time, that is, one tour handing each 10, that one of those is replaced by something more valuable. Rust then become bloodbot killers, silver become gold ones, carbonado become diamond ones. About to see this, the minimum loot we saw is not replaced, instead there is something added on top of that. It means that instead of two boxes, you'll find three. The stock kit, the specialized kill streak fabricator, and another professional kill streak fabricator. We'll see briefly what do kill streak do and what are fabricators later on. This is applicable for every tour. Instead, for advanced and expert, there are additional rare chances of even better loots. Those are the ones that mostly keep people playing MVM these days. The first of these are strange Australian weapons. Since it is the only way to obtain them, they are pretty rare in the market and can go as high as good and neutral hats, especially primary deadly weapons like miniguns, scattergun and rocket launchers. The chance of getting an Australian is pretty slim. There isn't an official map, but from the statistics people have made, you could wait, on average, like 33 complete tours before getting one. On average means that there are people getting a first or second tour, and people passing the 100 not getting anything. Adds to that that the value of an Australian rocket launcher is way more than the underwhelming extinguisher, and you understand how hard it can be to get one and also be satisfied at its type. Yes, because the type of Australium is totally random, again. It's like rolling the dice with 33 phases and getting one if you land with only a given side of the dice. Then, if you land, it's like if you launched another dice with every different type of Australium, one per side, you'll get what Gaben decides you to get. When I say 33 tours, it means that you have almost 3 Australium every 100 tours paid. For example, in Two Cities Tour, like 3 Australiums for 400 tickets spent. Now we understand why they are pretty valuable, even these days. For other tours, like Mega Engine or Gear Grinden, you would pay just 300 tickets. But at every tour, you will end up with only pot killers, either common grade or rare and generally they have a lot less market value than specialized and professional kill streaks while you wait for the Australians. That's why even today people prefer to play Two Cities Tour instead of other tours in the hope for the Australian. 
then it's time for the almighty best drop that MVM can offer. But like as Australians, it might happen only in a fast tours at above. Around just 120 have dropped so far in a two years and a half time span in the entire world. This means that there are moments of several weeks where it does not drop at all in the entire world. And when it happens, everybody online gets alerted of its new birth. It is the Golden Frying Pan. It is not an Australian, it's golden. And it has a peculiarity that changes it in respect to the stock frying pan and the Australians as well. In respect to the stock pan, the Golden is an old class melee, while the stock frying pan can't be equipped by Angie with spies. In respect to Australians, what is as different is that when you kill someone, their ragdoll becomes a golden statue, so everybody around knows someone is yielding a golden pan. Adds to that that the golden pants drop with a random professional kill streak kit already applied onto them. This is a nice bonus. The market value of such a thing is as like as a good monthly salary in real life, north of $2,500 for sure. As always, it is a random drop. It could happen to be offered to a first tourer or to a veteran. Nobody knows actually. And now another question: What happens when you hand a tour? When you hand a tour, that is, you complete all the missions in it, you get the loot screen we discussed before. And then your badge rises of one level and everything reset. I mean, you are again free to complete the whole missions of that tour again, paying other tickets for the chance to get another final reward. The badge level increases, rinse and repeat. Badge level is an important thing to avoid possible kicks or aid from other randoms in Manap as the scoreboard always should be level for everybody. Seeing a 52 guy playing spy is something many would accept, while not many would think you are a reliable spy with zero or one tool under your belt. What is important is that if you just like to play man up because of the better ever skill level you play in there, and not for the loot at all, you can play for free a lot of missions indefinitely without consuming any ticket. In fact, if let's say you need just Ctrl Alt Del mission of Steel Trap and you don't care to ever finish the tour, you can always join the manap screen, individually select any other missions you already completed and disregard voluntarily the one you actually need to end the tour, that is Ctrl Alt Del. The result will be that you'll play in manap server, together with people taking their prizes at the end, while you won't pay your ticket and you won't get anything. In fact, you can spend more tickets than the number of missions in a tour ever until you complete the tour and everything resets. So you can play 5 missions freely, but not blame Gaben not giving you absolutely anything at the end. It's like bootcamp, but occupying a man up slot. When you think it's time to end the tour, you go complete Control Alt Dell, you pay the ticket and get the final loot that, in steel trap of the example, can be about killer, silver or gold, with the rare occasions of getting an Australium and even a golden frying pan. Is it clear? Now let's discuss the type of kill streaks and difference between fabricators and kits. Let's focus on what is the type of loot found in the two cities tour beside of the rare Australiums. First, let's introduce you the kill streak kits. There can be three variants: stock or normal the specialized and the professional. What a kill streak kit does? It's a tool that can be applied to a weapon. Every kill streak has an attribute that says to which weapon it is born for and can't be changed. Of course, the type of weapon is a random choice of the loot reward drop system. The stock of normal kill streak kit applied to a weapon renders it kill streak active. It means that your HUD will have a kill counter lasting for the life you are playing, sounds will alert you when you rack up 5 or multiple of those kills, and, above all, kill feed and final VIP scoreboard will show those numbers to everybody else. It's a sort of a strange counter lasting just for one life of your character. The specialized kill streak kit is as like as the former, but it adds a sheen to your weapon. There can be multiple colors available, yellow, team colored, green, etc. 
Of course, these shields are random, and they should be more apparent the more the kills you do shoot. The rest is as light as the normal kill streaks. The professional kill streak kit is as light as a specialized, plus it adds a special particle effect to the eyes of your player the more kills you rank up. But you need at least 5 kills for those eyes starting to show anything, and then the more the kills, the wider the effect. The same applies even when battling against robots in MVM, but the number are multiplied, so it might be 20 instead of 5, the factor you need to reach to start showing the particle eye effect. Even those effects have different particle shapes, and as like as Gaben loves, the assignment is totally random upon drop as a loop. And about Kids vs Fabricator, it's a bit too long and off topic, I think. Thus, I'd suggest you to take a look at my first video about their existence. Link here and in the description of this video. Basically, however, a fabricator must be filled up by a certain ingredients it requires before it can be transformed into a kit and be used. Or you can take a practical example about how to build a professional history kit from scratch and finally apply to a weapon with this other video. It's very educative, I must say. Finally, a hint. Those rewards had a lot more of market value when they were new. Gold book killers went in value as Australians are now, when they were the only type of rare reward, and they sunk, and everything will eventually. So my suggestion is, should in the future a new tool be offered by Valve with a total new type of rewards, like, let's say, the uranium hot killers weapon, with a slight chance of getting an unusual effect attached, it's just an example. Please, rush at playing that thing. Their value will stay profitable for some time, and the first comers will take the higher benefit to that. Agree? So, have you now a clearer idea of what Manap is at this point? Which are the differences between Manap and Bootcamp? How to save a ticket and play Manap? Which are, as of today, the rewards Valve is offering for your participation to Manap? Did you get bored of hearing me saying the obvious for you? It's okay, but when some one of your friends asks for something here debunked, it will be easier for you to copy-paste this link and let them learn by themselves how you see that. And about this channel, the same playlist where I put this new video, as literally a video for every class you might want to play in MVM. Class roles, best weapon selection, best upgrade paths, you should check them all and forward them to your new friends, if any. You'll help the MVM community by doing this. Hope you enjoyed, really. Be the next getting a golden frying pan. And thanks for watching.